Rumor has it that actress Charlotte Rampling was once in a relationship with two men at the same time. But what is more unusual is that both men lived in the same house as her. Is this true? And what more has happened in the life of Charlotte Rampling? But before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying I subscribed, and we'll do our best to personally reply to your comment. The Daughter of a Gold Medalist Charlotte Rampling was born in 1946 in Great Britain. She was brought up with fame and attention as her father was a NATO commander and successful painter. Rampling's father also won a gold medal at the Berlin Olympics in 1936. Being raised in an overachieving environment helped Rampling become a pretty great actress for her time. After attending school in Versailles and the prestigious St. Hilda's School in England, Rampling worked as a model before making her film debut as a water skier in the 1965 movie The Knack, and how to get it. Her next film was Lucino Visconti's The Damned. The incestuous political drama was originally rated X in the United States. Her rise in fame. Her breakout role, however, wouldn't come until the next year, when she performed opposite Lynn Redgrave as the sassy but beautiful roommate of the title character in Gregory Girl. The movie became a hit and opened Rampling's opportunities in acting. In the 70s, she continued appearing in films such as The Vanishing Point, Henry VIII and His Six Wives, and Max, and Mon Amour, where she acted like a woman in love with a chimpanzee. After these films, Rampling gained a lot of recognition for her meaningful and bold portrayal of characters. In 1973, she worked alongside Sean Connery in a sci-fi adventure movie titled Zardoz. But Rampling's most intense role didn't come until she appeared in the 1974 movie The Night Porter. In this movie, she played a concentration camp survivor who was reunited with the Nazi guard who had traumatized her throughout her captivity during World War II. Two years later, the actress acted alongside Robert Mitchum in the detective thriller Farewell My Lovely. She then acted as a vicious heiress confined to a mental institution in the French, Italian, and German film collaboration titled Le Chat de l'Occidie. The actress's reputation would skyrocket throughout the late 70s as well where she acted in Foxtrot and in Stardust Memories, which was the follow-up to the much-hailed movie titled Manhattan. Rampling's career in the 80s. Rampling spent much of the mid-80s filming in Europe. One of the most notable performances during that time was as the mysterious mistress of a murder victim in the French crime thriller In ne Motte que du Foie, though she would return to America for Alan Parker's Angel Heart. The movie was considered a heavily praised voodoo-themed crime thriller, featuring Rampling as an unlucky woman whose heart was extracted from her body. Soon after, Rampling could be seen as the deceitful Laura in the courtroom drama titled The Verdict, where she acted alongside Paul Newman. Though her fondness for murder mysteries and historical political drama still manifested itself through her performances in Paris by Night and Invasion of Privacy, Rampling also found interest in numerous comedies, including Time is Money and Asphalt Tango, which were released throughout the 90s. Rampling's name was soon launched back into the A-list after her performance as a complicated aunt in the multi-award-winning movie, The Wings of the Dove. In 2000, the actress's portrayal of a phenomenally distraught widow in Under the Sand was praised by critics and audiences alike as one of the best performances of the year. After participating in several documentaries and in Spy Game, Rampling starred as a conservative mystery writer in another movie titled Swimming Pool. This role would then win her an award for Best Actress from the European Film Academy. After winning this award, she went on to play supporting roles in films such as The Statement and Immortal Ad Vitam. Her transition in becoming a singer. Despite being successful in the film industry, acting wasn't Rampling's first career choice. In the very beginning, she wanted to be a singer. When she was just a teen, she and her sister Sarah performed as a duo in cabarets before her father found out and stop them from continuing. Decades of acting were to follow, but finally, after almost half a century later, Rampling took the courage to start producing music. In 2002, after four years of voice training, her first music CD was released titled Comme une femme with Michel Rivgauche and Jean-Pierre Stora. Her songs were successful and pretty much enjoyed by her fans. 
So she followed with another album called Le Grand de Sable. Rampling made yet another professional transformation, this time in theater, making her debut to great reviews in 2003, starring in Petit Crime Conjugal in Paris. In 2004, she continued to delight stage audiences, this time in London with her lead role in The False Servant. And just a couple of years later, Rampling appeared in a French version of The Dance Of, at the Theatre Madeleine in Paris. On the other hand, her work in cinema has continued to flourish. She starred in Heading South, Keys to the House, Never Let Me Go, Lemming, Chaotic Anna, Angel, Babylon AD, The Duchess, and The Eye of the Storm. In 2013, Rampling appeared in the final season of the HBO series Dexter as Dr. Elizabeth Vogel. During that same time, she was appearing on stages in France, Switzerland, and Spain reciting selected poetry of Sylvia Plath. The tour lasted for one year straight and ended in London in 2014. A couple of months after the tour ended, Rampling became the new face of NARS Cosmetics. The beautiful black and white image of her looking very chic was taken by the founder, Francois Nars himself. Rampling's most recent work. In 2015, Rampling acted as the lead role in a mini-series called London Spy and in the second season of Broadchurch. At this time, the actress also won the Silver Bear Award for Best Actress at the Berlinale Film Festival. She then starred in a theatrical production called Neck of the Woods in Manchester. The play revolved around a fairy tale story that was given a new experimental twist. In 2016, Rampling accused those refusing that year's Academy Award ceremony of hostility towards Caucasians. However, her comments were considered offensive, outrageous, and ignorant but she was at least defended by Clint Eastwood. Rampling later apologized for her comments and expressed regret that her statements were misinterpreted. One year later, the actress co-starred as Veronica Ford alongside Jim Broadbent and Emily Mortimer in The Sense of an Ending. Her next film was in Hannah, where she portrayed the title role of the wife of a man imprisoned on different crimes. For this role, she was awarded the Volpe Cup for Best Actress Award at the 74th Venice International Film Festival. During the same year, Rampling starred opposite Alicia Vikander and Ava Green in Euphoria. In 2019, she was cast in the Denise Villeneuve adaptation of Dune her personal life. When it comes to her personal life, Rampling married a New Zealand actor and publicist, Brian Southcombe, in 1972. The pair had a son together right before divorcing in 1976. A weird thing about them is that they were reported to have been living a polygamous lifestyle with a male model named Randall Lawrence. In 1978, the actress went on to marry French composer Jean-Michel Jarre, and had her second son. The marriage ended in divorce in 1997 when she learned from a newspaper story about Jarre's affairs with other women. Rampling then remained engaged to Jean-Noël Tazez, who was a French journalist and businessman until his death in 2015. As of today, it is reported that she currently lives in Paris. Which Charlotte Rampling movie was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and check out the next video in this series.